Hello YouTubers, welcome back to the Team Accelerate channel. In my hands I hold a 60 inch Team Accelerate Q, which Matthew made. It's 30 inch shaft, 30 inch butt, very nice, 11, 8 diameter shaft. New tip, what kind of tip is this Matt? Navigator Automatic Medium. Okay. For the uh, record, I did not ask him to put that shameless plug in. Thank you. <laughs> now, back to the content. Now, we're going to work on strong alignment part two. We're going to put in another alignment, which is a visual alignment to go along with the strong physical alignment that we did in video, in our first video, part one on this. So, what we need to establish, what you need to establish, not me, <laughs> is... Which eye is your dominant eye? Do you know? There are several videos online about how to test it, but I'm going to show you real quick. Make a triangle. Put a dead center. Put a dead center on an object about 10 feet away from you. Center it in there. Okay. Now, if you are if you suspect you are right eye dominant, close your right eye. If you cannot see the object in the triangle anymore you are right eye dominant if you suspect that you are left eye dominant close your left eye if it is not inside the triangle you are left eye dominant so if you are left eye dominant and i found this last week a young lady had she she's more left eye dominant than right eye and she shoots right-handed so my suggestion to her was, because she's a pretty good player and she has very good fundamentals, but she was still missing things off. You know, she, she, her straight shots were going off a little, causing her to miss longer shots. So what I had her do was, when she got down into her stance, was put her stick more to the left side of her chin instead of the center. So she could look at it with her dominant eye i am not left eye dominant that is why that cue ball went crazy mm -hmm. <laughs> so another way you can fix that would be to when you set up on the shot line i'm right eye dominant so i want my shot line to be for me on the outside edge of my right foot for you, it could be the middle. For example, I'm left eye dominant, and I actually line up more to the to the middle of the line myself personally. But if you are left eye dominant, like I said, you could stand here with your right foot on the shot line, and you shoot right-handed, that is. And if that is still not enough, put the shot line inside this leg. And that should bring you more in line with your dominant eye to shoot the shot. You, they're, they're, uh, one person said, uh, you know, there's no cookie cutter, cookie cutter style, but there isn't. There really isn't. He was correct in every, every, everything he said. There, uh, this game, when you get a piece of advice for, from somebody, at first, do it verbatim as to how they explain it to you. And if you're still a little off, tweak it a little. And usually all that means is moving right or to the left of what, they, of what they're trying to show you. But you have to be honest with yourself and you have to find that in between or that tweak. They can't really do it for you. So, again, we're going to go over the steps. We're going to go hanging, you know, shoulder width apart next to the shot line because I'm right eye dominant. Cue hanging loose. And we're going to pivot until our shaft is in line with the shot line. And there are two ways to do this. You can go right from there into the shot or... You could come from up here, like a lot of European players do, down into the shot line, set position, 
mini strokes, pause, hit. Uh, there's also the uh, entry that I use and I try to get people to use. It's called, and it was, no, it was coined by uh, Mark Wilson. Mark Wilson coined this term, the quiet entry. And I've also heard Jeremy Jones refer to it as well as the quiet entry. When you get into the shot and you're doing this the whole time, you cannot check your aim. You cannot check your aim if you're doing this all the time. So that is not what we, that's what we don't want to do. This is what he refers to as, <coughs> as the quiet entry. Get in, set, check your aim. Mini strokes, mini stroke, pause, hit. That's proper stroke structure. Talk about a hole in one. <laughs> okay, happy go one. So anyway, uh, and the one system that's out there that I really like using for helping players stand more square to the shot is center to edge. When you you want to come down here, Matt? I'd be happy to. When I use center to edge, my feet are very square. And this is why I like using center to edge and why I think all pool players should at least learn it because it helps you to stand square to the shot. Just like most snooker players. And I, I believe that if snooker players learn center to edge, they're a leg up on everybody else because they already stand very square to the shot. And it would fit them perfectly. This is a 15 outside. Just out and up a little bit with my left foot. Into the shot. Pause. Hit. Cue ball stops dead straight. Dead straight. Uh, and uh, my one uh, viewer noticed that my stance was a little off, and and I was tired. I did, you know, I, I work six days a week. I work a lot, but today I didn't work at all, and my stance is beautiful because my back's not hurting. My back's not hurting. Okay, and that's huge. I'm, an, I'm getting to be an old man now. <laughs> so rest is key for me. <laughs> it's key for anybody, but as you get older, you just can't do it like you used to. So to review, I'm, I'm right eye dominant. So I stand next to the shot line. I'm going to pivot on this foot till my cue the shaft on my cue is over top of the shot line. And then I can get straight into the cue ball like this. And if I have to, it's set position here. If I'm off a little, I can tweak it a little bit left or right. If you move more than half a tip, if you have to move your body, or if you have to move the stick more than half a tip to make your adjustment, stand up and start over again. Stand up and start over again. I'm going to get into set position here. Mini strokes. Pause. Hit. And that is how most professionals are doing it this way. You have some exceptions to the rule. You have... Shane Van Boning, long swoopy stroke. You have Chris Melling, longest flowing stroke, most beautiful stroke I've ever seen. Okay. Uh, there was one more thing I wanted to say about this. Oh, uh, 
There's another, uh, oh, I already did the straight down in, right? I did say we could come straight down in. Yeah, from your, from here. Oh, Jerry Jones said it when he first started coaching Skylar Woodward for the Moscone Cup. It's so one thing they worked on, and I'm going to show you what it is right now. See if you can pick it out. Do it one more time, you, and then we'll come you, what it is. Okay. All right. I'm going to do my whole thing. I'm going to do many strokes this time. Set many strokes. Did you figure out what it was? A very pronounced pause at the end of your backswing. Two things happen there. Two things happen. Very important. There's two transitions that take place. All right. You pull back with your tricep. You push forward. You go, you finish, you follow through with your stroke with your bicep. If you do not pause, these two muscles are working together and your arm's going to go off to the side. Okay. One more important transition takes place from your eyes to the cue ball, object ball. From your eyes from the cue ball to the object ball. You get online. Set position. Make sure you're aimed. I, I'm good. Many strokes. Pause, transition, I'm dead on where I want to hit that ball. And when you do that, that ball will stop like that for you dead straight. Okay? Get that transition. And I want everybody to take note that when Mr. Van Boney has a very diff, has a difficult shot or something that he considers very important, and he does it a lot, but on the most difficult ones, he bears what they call bearing down. I'm going to show you. This right here. He's in set position forever. Long pause at his back, end of his backswing. If you think I'm wrong, check it out. He has a huge pause especially on the long, difficult shots. And they also get into the ball one more way. Especially on long, difficult shots. They do this. I got one more for it. And that's it. I promise. They got one more way of doing it. Especially long, straight. This is a short table, but I'm, I'm going to give it to you like this. They come in with their feet together. Like that. They walk into the shot. I can't really do it because of this pipe here, because I wanted to come straight down on it. Can't do it. <laughs> so anyway, I hope I explained that nice and clearly uh, so that everybody will understand. I waited a month to give you a uh, time to get used to doing your strong physical alignment. And I don't want to throw too much at everybody at one time, because learning too much at one time will mess up your brain. <laughs> oh. I know because I've done it to people. All right. Thanks for watching me. Now I'm going to let Matt take over. All right, gang. Thanks again once again for watching the video with Joe and I today. Um, please don't forget to check out the description section for the uh, link to the Patreon page. If you're inter interested in uh, helping us support new and more improving content, as you can see, this is our first video using the new uh, lavalier mics to help get rid of the the nasty sound we had in our first groups of videos. So hopefully now that's will be much better off for you guys. Uh, and also, of course, you know, please check out www.dfebillards.com and uh, order your Accelerate products from there. Thanks again. I wish to talk to you guys all soon. Thank you. Bye.